Can billboards help stop anti-Asian racism, or is this just a big government waste of money? Oh, you guys just wait and see. We're going to show you what stopping racism looks like a boot here in Canada. Uh, this is a viral news article on Reddit. It comes from Canada. It says anti-East Asian hate remains a problem in Toronto. A new campaign aims to shut it down. Councilwoman Lily Chang, who represents Willowdale, she started this campaign, Andrew. And it says tuning into K-pop, but tuning out the hate. Learning to speak Mandarin, but not to speak out against hate? Are you down in a bubble tea, but won't shut down the hate? Mm. Think about it, don't you know? Clever little copywriting here in these ads, guys, but we're going to talk about whether something like this being posted around the city or at schools can actually help stop anti-Asian racism or at least reduce it. I have my own opinion, but everybody else has their own opinion as oh, well. Oh, there were some debates in the yeah. comment section, Andrew. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. But you know what is something that people cannot hate that is Asian? It, there is no debate. Smala sauce tastes very good. It is a mixture of truffle, a little bit of truffle flavor, and Sichuan peppercorns, guys. It's got a nice mala. Check out all the chefs and the foodies who enjoy it on our Instagram page. Yes, legit Michelin star chefs have said it's good. So anyways. Real quick, real quick, Andrew, because people might be like, oh no, there's no racism here in the land of Drake. Look at Drake and Bieber and Simu and they're so multicultural. I'm going to play a clip from uh, Sheldon Ho, who's part of Canto Mando and a racist incident, Andrew. He just went through like two weeks ago at a haunted house. Play the clip. Just a quick PSA. Today I learned that for some businesses, being racist is totally okay as long as it's Asian. The other day I was at Canada's Wonderland with my girlfriend for one of those Halloween festivals and the staff's supposed to scare you, right? Walking through one of their haunted mazes and one of the staff jumps out in costume to scare us. But instead of saying boo, the guy says, Konnichiwa. I'm a little sorry because I'm like, what, what was that? And then I look behind him and he has friends, the staff, are laughing. First, I'm kind of like, oh, okay, like, okay, I guess it's just a joke. But then I thought about it, I'm like, wait a minute, like, that was pretty rude. Message Canada's Wonderland trying to get some kind of like, Sorry? And they're just like, uh, if you don't have your admission ticket, which I threw out, by the way, because who the hell keeps their admission ticket? We can't really look into this for you. Can't really, like, confirm you're actually in the park. I'm like, yo, I bought a $400 fast pass to give you a receipt for. I have all my receipts from the food I ate in the park. I just want my admission ticket. And I don't want to be that guy playing the race car, but I feel like a lot of times in Western society, people overlook racism and discrimination towards Asians, and they just feel like nothing. And I feel like if I was a different race, they would treat a lot more seriously than we can't do anything, even though I have. Andrew, real quick, we got to acknowledge, was this a microaggression when the guy is supposed to be professional? He's a paid Halloween house scarer, and he pops out at Sheldon, and he says, Konnichiwa, and everybody starts busting out laughing yeah, and breaking yeah. character. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely consider that uh, a microaggression because it's not a violent or blatantly disrespecting him because he's Asian, but he's not going to say... He's, is that haunted? First of all, that's super unprofessional of that guy to do that. And second of all, he's not going to talk that way to any other race. Like to an Indian person, is he going to try to say the Indian greeting? Or to the Spanish person, is he going to say, hola, como estas? When he's trying to scare the person. Or is he going to be like, you know, say to the black person, like, what's up, bro? I'm scaring you, homie. Like, that's like, first of all, that would just be ridiculous. Right. I think the truth is, Andrew, and uh, let's just say the gorilla in the room. I think everybody thinks it's obvious. People feel like it's okay to have microaggressions against specifically East Asians, arguably even Southeast Asians a little bit less because they may be more intimidated of them. They think that East Asians are so soft. It's almost like picking on uh, something inconsequential, right? Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. I think... My overall takeaway is that for this campaign, obviously, I think initially people are like billboards to stop anti-Asian racism. Yeah, that's really stupid because what? Is a crazy person going to be like, oh, I want to hurt some Asians today and then read this? Oh, I got to shut down the hate. You know what? I won't hurt this Asian. That is not how it works. I think this billboard campaign is actually for all everybody else that can help and speak up about it. Because I think ultimately when you set up a bunch of reminders around the city, it's not actually going to stop a violent act, but it can start a conversation. Right. So it I can almost begin to not change that single violent perpetrator or that violator who's uh, verbally harassing somebody, but how people treat that person. Yeah, and also just like it's for the friends and the allies and friends of Asians to be reminded that they can speak up and about it. And maybe it also makes Asians feel more empowered.
Yeah, to, I think for them to be like, you know what? The government's got my back. Society's got my back. This guy, he's not Asian, but he's got my back because yeah. he's seen the campaign. Uh, listen, billboards, pictures, I know they don't sound like much, but if you remind people to say thank you or open the door for people, or on the subway, David, they always have these little ads sometimes like, oh, move for an old person, you know, move for a pregnant lady. Like, a New York, you see something, yeah, those say are just, something. Those are just reminders. Yeah, exactly. Though I'm not saying it changes my mind 100%, but it does remind me of things, you know? So reminders are important. Oh, man. In China and in Asia, Japan in general, Andrew, they love, like, collectivist public slogans. Yeah. Like, ganjing cheng shi, hao de sheng huo, right. which just means, like, clean city, good life. Right, right, right. Um, but, David, I got to say, even though I... Obviously, if they could allocate this money towards, like... I don't know, self-defense classes for Asians and stuff like that. I think that would be a better use of money. But since they cannot or will not, I think this is, right. this is worth something. But right. yeah, a lot you're, of people you're, you're saying that's more of the job of a private campaign. Yeah. Make Asians strong or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think the government's going to do that. So I'm just realistic about things. But David, a lot of people in the comments section would disagree with me. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, if you got a racist teen who bullies his Asian classmate, what impact will this billboard have? Nothing. Listen, a lot of people who are anti-racist will support it, but it's just preaching to the choir and will completely fly over the head of the actual racist themselves. Here's my thing. Imagine this, man. Let's say you're playing pickup basketball at the gym, right? And there is a dispute over the rules of the game. Over because you know pick a basketball classic it, basketball it situation. Has, it has different like oh are we playing to eleven one are we playing one continuation right yeah. exactly are we playing this what's a foul blah 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 but guess what then there's a little board on the wall that says pick up basketball rules of this gym guess what that puts that argument to rest so while it doesn't stop anybody from fouling another person or fighting another person or violating that. At the end of the day, there are some rules in place so that now everybody knows, hey, hey, guys, by the way, I was just reminded that what this person is doing is wrong. And not only that, I think that Lily Chang, she looks like a millennial that she, it was quite like tuned for the younger generation. Like, oh, you like K-pop, but you're not saying anything when your friend's saying something racist and let's say there's a bunch of not white people hanging out together. Say something because you listen to K-pop. Don't let it slide. You know what I mean? You drink bubble tea. Yes. You, you took a Mandarin uh, 101 class. Obviously, the internal messaging to other Asians, I would say, is practice self-defense or practice verbal self-defense. And uh, by the way, we have to say that this stems from an incident from when Lily Chang was five years old and she was chased through her neighborhood by three non-Asian guys that were uh, swearing at her, calling mm. her every single derogatory term no, in the that, book. Honestly, man, I went through that a lot as a kid too. And I know that not every Asian did. I know even Asians who grew up in a nicer part of our city or the city right next to us. And remember some people at church, they had none of those experiences yeah. that we had. Listen, it's pretty sad, but let's be honest. The reality is that people need to be reminded how anti-Asian racism is wrong. And it's just wrong. And you got to point it out. Just like any racism against any other group, you got to be able to just say, you know what? That's that's wrong. You don't have to, I mean, do you have to lay your life down and save that? You know what I mean? What To whatever extent you want, that's up to you. But I'm just saying, we all got to just sit there and say, that's wrong. That's wrong. Somebody said, why are Asians always relying on the system and the billboards to do everything for them? They should be the ones bullying racists into submission by having unity and training and getting to the gym and being tough themselves. And then somebody also said, but when Asians do fight back, people also think it's bad because we're stepping out of character and the boxes that people put us in causing cognitive dissonance, which also makes people feel uncomfortable because we are breaking character in society. I mean, I see what they're saying, but ultimately, listen, man, if you can't find it in yourself to think about this on a personal level, because the government is not going to get personal with you. That's just what I'm saying. Like, you mean the government just it provides generalized advice. It's yeah. not going to address your specific neighborhood, your specific fishbowl. Maybe your kid plays hockey. Maybe he plays basketball, contact sports. He's going to come across a lot more comments than if he stays in the STEM world like you and understand, it does coding competitions. Like, it's already kind of weird for the government and taxpayers to like spend money on giving all Asians like pepper spray or something. Like, I don't even know. Like, that's usually a private thing to do. But anyways, keep going. Um, somebody was just saying, I can't believe there's some Asians in here saying that they've never experienced it themselves. Experiences can vary greatly, even in a small local area. Even a brother and a sister might have different experiences growing up. The truth is, there's a lot of stuff out there. And just because some Asians didn't go through it and they want to feel comfortable in their own mind, a lot of Asians have a tendency to de deny other Asians 
experiences. Oh yeah. See, how do, do you would you agree that that happens sometimes, or do you think? I think that used to be true, but after COVID. If you Asian and you say you didn't hear anything, I'm not saying necessarily directly to you individually, but somebody you know or somebody you know who know you know two rings out, mm-hmm. I'd be shocked. Yeah, no, and uh yeah, I mean I think all Asians have stories, but different stories uh are are like less extreme and more extreme. So that's why I'm saying like Right, you're saying some people might have went through a three out of ten yeah, comment yeah, yeah, yeah. and other people went through like a ten yeah, out of ten. If I times. talk to somebody and they say, yo, I, I experienced racism growing up, I sometimes I'm just like, oh okay, like what happened? Like just so I know your story and I know what extent you went through, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, there was a huge debate and we're getting into the you know hyper nuances here. You gotta understand both sides about they were saying, is Canada more racist or less racist than America? Here's my general take, guys. Canada is way less violent. It's mm-hmm. way less violent. Mm-hmm. So even if you hear more likely to hear ignorant common in 2023, because I do not think somebody in an expensive $300 haunted house, premium haunted house, is yelling konnichiwa in America. No, at that's eight. true. That's, that's like something that happened in like the 90s in America. But an Asian is also way more likely to get physically super attacked in America. So that's what I try to explain to people. Like Canada to me, it's almost like, I don't want to say it's like America light, but it's almost like, let's say for example, I'm a vet in the NBA and I don't rotate on defense and I give up a bucket because I'm lazy or I'm a rookie and I miss my rotation because I just don't know the defensive scheme. We both gave up a three in the corner, but one is viewed way more heinously Mm. the veteran who is too lazy giving up on the play right i'm saying the rookie could still miss the rotation but it's up for a completely different reason yeah and i think that that's the best way to explain like things can happen in canada but i think it's like driven by almost like boyish silliness or something overall canada is not as racist as america guys just if you made me say yes or no i I, it's not but it is true that i have heard one time I'll, i'll tell the family story dad was driving in Vancouver, Canada, and an Asian American threw candy at his window and said, effing go back to where you're from. You don't even know how to drive. And I remember it was an Asian American. I mean, uh, Asian Canadian, I'm sorry. That's some um, self-hate, man. It was self-hate. And the crazy right. thing was the police were right behind him and he got pulled over. I remember wasn't. that. I remember that. Yeah, and I always thought that that was really weird because I just don't think that would happen in America either. So long story short, it's just difficult to describe because a lot of things are different over there. Mm. Um, ultimately, Andrew, what is the, your major takeaway here? Ah. They got the millennial. This is more modern than any anti-Asian hate campaign in America. Uh-huh. Anti-Asian hate campaigns in America, they center around more like attacks. These are centering around, it right. seems like, youthful microaggressions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think people need reminders, man. I don't I don't see anything wrong with reminders. If uh, this is where the government wants to spend their money, obviously on a personal level, I will stand by the fact that, you know, you got to teach you and your family verbal self-defense um, and like how to come back, like maybe use words to clap back at people. Also, you know, learn self-defense physically yeah, as right. well. So obviously I agree with all those things. I think that that's what Asians need to do. But I think on a softer side, not everybody's going to fight back. Like I don't expect like little, you know, the, the 12 year old girl to fight back. She needs, needs to feel like the city's on her side. That's what, a young, helpless kid needs to feel like. They need to feel like, hey, like at least like the government knows that that's wrong and everybody else, you can read this sign too. Everybody knows that's wrong. And so I feel like people in Canada, doing- they listen to the government more. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's true too. So yeah, if the government's on your side, like you said, hey man, um, I'll say this. Ultimately, guys, shout out to Lily Chang. But I think the debate Some- is encouraged and there's other aspects and guess what? Like you said, Andrew, the government is never going to address those aspects. Yeah. That's the personal aspect. Again, man. How empowered are you? How are you teaching your kids how to live in this world where encountering potential hostilities for looking like an alien or being perceived by some people, to be honest, as Nemoidians? Do you remember Nemoidians, Andrew? They were viewed as like not fully evil, but light evil, but greedy, but more towards the dark side versus the good side mm-hmm. in the Star Wars. But they were also viewed as very weak. I feel like that is sometimes on the downside how Asians are perceived. Is it interesting that on these posters, it said specifically, let's end anti-East Asian racism because in Canada, they have so many South Asians. But this campaign is specifically for East Asian looking people. Yeah, I think it all comes back to a lot of things too. Like I said, you know, I got a lot of Southeast Asian friends. Um, I feel like sometimes they're, 
and, and the way they carry themselves or what they've been through or how they look or the, the clothing that they wear is, it's a whole different situation too. Yeah. When it comes to like this type of, uh, I don't know, I guess very micro street interaction. Anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, we encourage the debate. Keep it civil. What do you think of this campaign? How different is Canadian racism from American racism? Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.